So, on Top Gear and other shows, you'll have a car start from rest, accelerate all the way to its top speed, 30 meters per second, roughly 67 miles an hour, and then back down to zero. So we have somewhat of a gas phase where they're hitting the gas, and somewhat of a brakes phase. They're hitting the brakes. What we want to know is we want to know the total distance traveled while it's going through all of this. So our first step that we can do is take a look at our acceleration versus time graph, our velocity versus time graph, and then see if we can get something for the position versus time graph, or at least force me to do it and maybe not you. So for our acceleration versus time graph, our car is going to be accelerating at plus 3 meters per second squared while it is accelerating. And then it is going to break at negative 5. So the first thing we can see is we don't have one constant acceleration. But we can break this into a while we have plus 3 and a while we have minus 5, and thus keep constant acceleration in this part, keep constant acceleration in this part, and then understand what's happening in the other sections. So for this velocity, our velocity is going to start at zero. It is going to eventually end at zero. And we are going to have a point right, right at here where it gets to its maximum value of 30. And so we'll have something like this. And so what we can see from this is that right the velocity of our final while we're gassing is equal to our initial while we're braking, right? That we have this nice continuous bit here, and in fact, both of them would be like 30 meters per second. We'll keep filling in other stuff in our knowns and unknowns table, but this is a really good kind of practice to help use these graphing things. For our position, we have, right, a upward slope parabola, so we'll have a parabola going up, and then over here, right, our parabola still has a positive slope, and the slope eventually gets closer to zero. So then we are going to have an inflection point kind of thing, and then looking like that. So we have here our delta t for the gas. We have here our delta t for the brakes. And we want to right, try to solve again for this delta s. We're going to have to solve for these. So as we organize, it's very good to, of course, right, write our kinematic equations. While we are in the gas, while we are in the brakes, we can use the kinematic equations. We can't just use them willy-nilly for all. So we have equation 1, vf equals vi plus at, and equation 2, sf equals si plus vit plus 1 half at squared. And we want to fill out our knowns and unknowns. So we do know the, the acceleration when we're gassing is going to be plus 3 meters per second squared. Our acceleration when braking is negative 5 meters per second squared. Our velocity while gassing initial is 0. Our velocity while gassing final is 30. Our velocity while braking initial is 30. Our velocity while braking final is 0. And our position while gassing initial is 0 meters. So a lot here. And what we want to find first off is we want eventually the entire delta s. So we can write this just as the position breaking final, right? After we finish breaking, that is going to be our position for this. Um, so then if that's the case, then we need to know our position breaking initial. We need to know the time to gas, and we need to know the time to break. But we know that the position breaking initial, again, this is also continuous, is equal to the position gas final. So a number of things to solve. So let's get to it. So we want to find the time. And looking here, we have final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, and not the time. So we can solve for the time for both the gassing and the braking. 
So right, for the gassing, we know that our final velocity is 30 meters per second. Our initial velocity is zero meters per second. Our acceleration is plus three meters per second squared times time. So we can divide 30 meters per second by three and we get the time to gas is 10 seconds. While we are braking, we have zero meters per second equals 30 meters per second plus negative five meters per second squared times time to break. If we bring this over and then divide by five, we get the time to break is six seconds. So what do we do from here? Well, from here, we can then start using equation two to find right the position while gassing final. We take the position while gassing initial, which is zero meters, plus the velocity while gassing initial, which is zero meters per second, times, now we know T gassing is 10 seconds, plus one half times three meters per second squared, times 10 seconds, 20 squared. So, zero, zero, one half times three is 1.5, 10 squared is 100, 100 times 1.5 is SGF is equal to 150 meters, which is also equal to SVI. And now we can use equation two for while we are braking. So SBF equals SBI plus VBI times TB plus one half AB times TB squared. Well, going through, we just found out that SBI is 150 meters. VBI is 30 meters per second. TB is six seconds. One half is one half. AB is negative five meters per second squared. And TB squared is 36 seconds squared. And so then we just do a little bit of math. 30 times six, this is 180 meters. 36 times one half is 18. 18 times five is negative 90 meters. So we have 150 meters plus 90 meters. And so we get the SBF is 240 meters. So what's important about this is that we have two different constant accelerations, but since they're both constant accelerations, we just write out which one and we use subscripts G and B to help us understand which one we're doing. We can even write, give ourselves little notes, gassing and break and things like that. And we just don't panic and we just keep solving one equation, one unknown problems until we get our answer.